Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well and welcome to another reading vlog. Exciting times. Whew, it's really sunny today and I have quite the sweaty visage. So this week, as you'll see from the title of this video, I am going to be reading books that I chose knowing nothing about them based on their cover. If you watched last week's vlog, you'll know that I went to a bookshop for the first time in since December, so the first time this year. It was really exciting, lockdown's easing in the UK, and I bought a few books then. I didn't show you them because what I wanted to do, judge books based on their cover, buy books based on their cover. Real life book shopping is so different to online book shopping because you don't really get those just like, ooh, what's this, pick it up, have a look, as much. But even like in real life, I've said this before, I think because I like work with books, I do bookish social media, especially with newer releases. Like there's just not many of them that will be like displayed prominently in Waterstones that I don't have some concept of. So, you know, on like when it has little tables and like you buy one, get one half price or like your new hardbacks. I know about most of them because I'm a book nerd and I like to keep my eye on what's happening. But I also absolutely love reading backlist books. And so I thought I'd set myself the challenge of wandering around just the general fiction shelves and basically picking up or identifying any book that I like the cover of. So I did film some of it. I'll put the clips in in a second, but yeah, I went round and just any book whose cover intrigued me and that I had never heard of before. I like made a little note of them um, and I think I'd maybe got about seven or maybe seven or eight. And then I went and actually read the blurbs because you know, it's all well and good being like judge a book by the cover, but I also think it could have been a potentially disastrous vlog if I hadn't even looked into them at all and I picked up like three sci-fis, you know? So yeah, I did that and then I chose the three books that sounded the most interesting to me and that is what we're gonna be reading over the next few days. And yeah, I can't wait to read them. So without further ado, let's talk about the books I picked up. The first one, now that I've like thought about it more, I potentially have seen on Instagram, but I had no idea what this book was about. And I just love the cover and it is Braised Pork by Anne Yu. This actually might be a new release because it's French flappy. Yeah, so this was published in 2020. And like I say, I think I might have seen it on Instagram, but I'd kind of forgotten that. I just thought the cover was beautiful. And then when I read the back of it, it sounds amazing. So it says, one morning in autumn, just after breakfast, Gia Gia finds her husband dead in the bathtub of their Beijing apartment. And then like next to him is this sketch of this weird creature that he dreamt about. And so she basically sets out on a journey to discover what happened to him. So kind of a bit of a murder mystery, but obviously also seems like it might be a bit weird, a bit surreal and super excited for this. Then this one kind of tricked me because I love this cover, like from what I could see of it on the shelf. There's actually part of the cover that I don't love, but then it sounded so interesting when I was going around. I was like, I have to get it. So this is All Our Name by Dina Mangestu. And I love like the gold and like the foil and like the text. I don't like this little person. Is it a woman? I think it's a woman. Don't like her, but otherwise stunning cover. So it's set kind of on a dual timeline. So part of it is set in the 1970s in Uganda during political problems there. But then it's also set in America after the Vietnam War and following this man in a new relationship. And it says both men are called Isaac, but are they one in the same? Which I just think sounds really interesting. Again, a little bit of mystery. I love a dual timeline. This also won the Guardian First Book Award. It was published in 2014. I've never heard of it. Um, so yeah, that's another one I'm gonna be reading. And then finally, we have Ways to Disappear by Idra Novi. This cover is just so stunning. And it has French flaps as well. I think I am a sucker for a French flap, but I don't think you can even tell that from the spine. So it was just calling out to me. This also has a little bit of a mystery element to it. You might know one of my favorite things is like literary fiction that has some sort of like suspense intrigue. This is set in Brazil and it's about a Brazilian author who goes missing. So then her American translator goes and tries to find her. And it says it's like compulsively readable, but fabulously inventive. Um, there's some stuff on the back saying it's funny. I really haven't read much of anything set in Brazil. So very excited about that. Um, just seems quite like cookie. I love reading books about books and authors. Um, but also, like I say, yeah, a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of an adventure. I'm so excited. And again, had never heard of this one. And it is, or it was, I should say. This was first published in 2016. So these, I don't hit myself in the face. These are the books I'm going to be reading over the next few days. And I actually can't wait. It's been so long since I picked up a book 
that wasn't like super super anticipated or like that had been on my radar for a while and you never know I might find like a complete hidden gem I really hope that I do it is a Thursday the sun is shining I just went to the shop uh to get some stuff for dinner and oh it's just so nice out there but unfortunately my yard and doesn't get the sun in the evening um Alex is out with friends after work so I have the night to myself which can't pretend I don't love. I had a super busy work week and so I haven't really read for pleasure. I've read like one book this week and it was a pretty short book. So tonight is just going to be dedicated to me, myself and I reading. Very excited about it. I think I will pick up, I'm feeling all our names first. This is what I'm feeling in the mood for. So yeah, I'm going to pick this one up in a little bit. When the cat is away, the mice make a ready meal because the mice can't cook for themselves. actually a pretty bougie ready meal uh co-op paella highly recommend and i also got myself a bougie little beer that i can't pronounce menabrea a premium italian lager which is delicious um, so i've read the first 100 pages well like 90 something pages of all our names uh which brought me to the end of part one so i thought that was a good time to tell you about it so as i say it's a dual timeline we have a timeline in uganda in the early 1970s and we're following a boy a young man um who isn't ugandan he's african but he isn't ugandan um and he's moved to uganda to it kind of confused me at first like I thought he was being a university student in Kampala but he isn't but he moves to Kampala and basically spends all his time like hanging out at the university just on the campus and he befriends this guy called Isaac but you find out pretty early on that like at some point he is going to be known as Isaac like our narrator so in that timeline it's basically about them being friends Isaac also doesn't go to the university but pretends he does um and Isaac is very kind of provocative very interested in politics it's around the time where there's a lot of like student communism um, a lot of like revolutionaries trying to overthrow the regime and so they get like kind of involved in little political things but at the university and there's a lot of like violence um and kind of like political upheaval then in the second timeline we're following a woman called helen who lives in like a midwestern american town she's a social worker and this man called isaac has come to the midwest basically kind of because they're worried about him being in uganda and so he becomes her like charge as a social worker but they begin a romantic relationship but it's like fairly segregated still it's not like socially acceptable for them to be together so obviously we don't really know which Isaac it is like I have an, a pretty good idea um but it's very much like she just talks about him as Isaac he doesn't talk about his past so it's kind of hard to get a feel for it I'm not sure if you're meant to be confused or if what I think is just what you should be thinking and I'm like second guessing myself it's definitely really interesting the stuff in set in Uganda um is kind of picking up a bit now there's something that's kind of just happened it's very sort of it's not like action-packed it's a fairly like introspective slow moving book but obviously there's a lot of like political action happening and then it's interesting getting the perspective of this like white american suburban woman who's kind of like over the hill because she's 30 and never married and her starting this relationship with isaac and that kind of struggle between it she never really feels like she knows isaac as i say there's a lot of like stigma still around like them being seen together so it's definitely interesting i'd say it's a yeah it's a fairly quiet book like i say despite all these like quite big political happenings in the uganda timeline but yeah interested to see where it's where it's gonna go hello so i've now retired up to bed uh actually weirdly like had been really looking forward to a night in reading and it has been a joy but also kind of have FOMO like been attached at the hip to Alex and I'm like how come you get to have fun in the sun and I don't but I've got a full weekend ahead of us and I do have some fun in the sun plans so that is good I'm just gonna get ready for bed now um I thought I'd show you very randomly this cleanser I've been using that my friend got me for Christmas it's like revolution like really cheap skincare it's the cream cleanser vitamin c and like it does smell quite strongly of oranges but I'm not wearing any makeup now, so it's just like a nice cleanser. But when I ran out of makeup remover, like eye makeup remover, I used this and it actually didn't sting my eyes. And it's like the first cleanser I've ever used to physically remove eye makeup that didn't 
blind me so that's nice i'm also like just over halfway through this now all our names i don't know why i keep forgetting what it's called and i definitely not that i didn't enjoy the first part but the second part that i've read i feel like we're much more in the swing of it now the first part was very much like laying the groundwork and now i am really really enjoying it so the ugandan timeline this relationship between isaac and isaac basically between these two young men getting involved in some potentially dodgy um political stuff but then everything at the time is kind of dodgy extremely insightful socio-political knowledge there for me but yeah it's just really interesting seeing that play out and seeing their relationship and there's actually some really beautiful writing about what it's like to to live in a place and our main character being i'm pretty sure he's ethiopian but being kind of not of uganda and kind of fallout um and the legacy of colonialism in africa i'm just finding that all really fascinating and it is getting a little bit tense and then obviously we know in a slightly more future timeline one of the isaacs is in america it's kind of obvious now which one it is but there's also some really interesting stuff around the relationship he has with helen your gut reaction is to kind of like dislike helen or to find her a little bit strange but then i guess like in the context of 1970s america and race relations and she's actually like having a bit more self-reflection now and their relationship is very complex for a lot of reasons like i say i have been really appreciating the writing and it's like really short chapters between the two timelines which i like because it's keeping some momentum and yeah really enjoying it i'm sure i'll finish it soon probably read a bit tonight um and then let you know but yeah i'm enjoying it morning guys it's friday and the sun is shining i am unfortunately at work but i have a lot of toil i just have a meeting at 2 p.m so i think we're going to take a big fat long lunch and then finish immediately after my 2 p.m meeting and enjoy the sun this is the north people you've really got to take it where you can get it Ayo, it's lunchtime and it is so nice and sunny. Go Diet Coke. I bought this Diet Coke for myself yesterday when I went to the shop to get dinner and I was like, oh, I'll put that in the fridge, can have it for my lunch. And then this morning, I don't know if anyone's seen like, so I talk about TikTok again, but that TikTok trend where it's like, I'm passing the phone to the person who is, and then you say something like really embarrassing that they've done. I was explaining that TikTok trend to Alex and I was like, you know, like for example, so we were like passing it back and forth, you know, just some fun insults. And I was like, I'm passing the phone to the person who has a Diet Coke in the fridge. And I was like, yeah, good one, mate. You haven't really mastered this. And he was like, minus a mouthful. And he opened my Diet Coke this morning and had some. So rude, guys. Really, really rude. Also realised I haven't wrapped up all our names, um, which I finished reading. This is such a beautiful book. It really kind of snuck up on me. It's kind of about war slash like a political rebellion, like a lot about in the Uganda timeline, like this up heaval and like soldiers and stuff and and you know reading about war and soldiers isn't always my kind of thing and then in the america timeline i just wasn't sure like i didn't feel like i had a full grasp on like helen and isaac's relationship but actually the more the book went on especially in like the last hundred pages it was honestly so beautiful like it's a really almost like wistful kind of like melancholy book it's written really beautifully from isaac or our unnamed narrator who may or may not be isaac's perspective um and the way that he talks about being in this country that is experiencing all these political rebellions and upheavals that are basically caused by you know the empire and imperialism but have, have become something else and watching the people around him try and find a place in that and and just like being overwhelmed by violence but then also his relationship with this best friend of his who he had in uganda and his relationship with helen and kind of trying to find a place i think it's a really interesting and like good choice that although it's kind of about uganda having our protagonist not be from uganda being an outsider and then obviously being an outsider in america um and yeah i felt really really moved by the end of it so definitely a quiet book it maybe not like flashy or like it has plot but really moving portrayal of of love and friendship um so yeah i'm really glad that i picked this up since i'd never heard of it before i think i'd probably give it i don't know somewhere between a 3.5 and a 4 i think just because i didn't feel like super super like i definitely felt 
more engaged and more affected in the second half than the first half but by the end of it i was like this is a really beautiful book so yeah that's that i'm worried i'm like burning my forehead might pick up my next book actually while i'm out here sunbathing seems like a nice thing to do um you're actually propped on it two seconds i've decided that i'm gonna pick up roast pork next because i thought that first book might have been like you know a little bit like mystery it wasn't really like that much about the intrigue whereas i think this is gonna have more intrigue because her husband's missing where is he and yeah i'm excited about it i don't know what that was just throwing up a shaka okay wow this what happens when you take your hair out of your scalp protecting from burn bun um just having a little bit of lunch for my meeting and i have been reading Bray's pork so just wanted to say i think i said her husband is missing he's not he's dead on the first page she finds him dead in the bath just a little corrections corner there only 25 pages in but enjoying hello so i finished work exciting unfortunately here's my dilemma my yard has lost the sun i was just like pressing my face against the garage door we're gone there is sun at the front but we have a front garden that isn't ours like it's downstairs is and so i could like just sit on the path if i somehow manage to get a chair down the stairs to sit on the path but then if the next door want to use their path then i'm gonna be in their way but i just don't want to relinquish the sun you know so that's all i really want to do this afternoon until this evening we were meant to be going out with our friends and they were going to bring their dog but the dog keeps being sick poor mini so that's off the card so i'll probably try and meet alex like in the village when he gets home from work although honestly the the chances of getting a seat in the sun in this gosh darn village are just slim to none but yeah i want to read my book for the next couple of hours and i want to do it in the sun so i'm like where do i go part of me was literally like just go to your parents sit in their garden don't think they're in um but that's a bit of a walk decisions decisions guys decisions decisions i actually did end up coming uh to my parents because this is where the sun's at um i've really caught the sun on my chest actually can you see um yeah and then dad's given me a beer i mean what a what a nice place to be i haven't actually done any more reading so i've just been catching up with my dad but i did bring braised pork because what i've read so far really enjoying like i say not a husband who goes missing he dies um and they live in beijing together and then our main character jia jia is kind of like financially insecure now feeling very like betrayed and her husband left behind like a weird drawing of this like fish man and she started having now like weird dreams about the fish man he had initially seen the fish man in his dreams um so yeah seems weird it's very readable it's got big writing so might read a bit more now really exciting morning of uh cleaning cleaning the house cleaning the bathroom that was really glamorous I feel like mrs hinge um last night was really fun it's just a nice night and now i'm gonna go sit in the garden for a little bit and read various fork hello i am going to go meet my sister for lunch so let's get ready i've also been reading braised pork and i am over halfway through and it's an interesting one it's very again very like quiet everyday kind of story and um, i would say it's like really really readable it's very accessible in terms of language so we're following gia gia who as i mentioned her husband dies right at the start the implication kind of that he died by suicide and so we just follow her in the aftermath of that really just like getting to grips with what her life is going to be now she's lived a fairly sheltered life with her husband who was i think i mentioned like financially well off um and he hasn't really left much provision for her and she wasn't really working so it's just sort of about her excuse me thinking about what she wants her life to be like now i guess she kind of starts a relationship with this man she was an artist before she got married so she's kind of doing more art and yeah just one of those books where very just mundane things happen but i really like those kinds of books um and I think, I guess it's about like feelings of unfulfillment. She's sort of like haunted by this image that her husband left behind, like a 
strange image and she's thinking about aging she's thinking about relationships her father left her mother when she was a child then her mother died um and so just think it's quite a again a slightly like melancholy obviously i'm not sure how it's going to end yet but exploration of what we choose to do with our lives a feeling of i guess a bit of apathy there's some interesting stuff around chinese kind of superstitions in terms of a widow being bad luck i'm interested to see like where it's gonna go i don't feel like i have huge amounts to say about it at the minute other than i'm enjoying it because there's nothing like hugely flashy happening with the writing or with the plot or really with the themes but that's not an insult i yeah i am just enjoying kind of spending time with Gia, Gia and kind of contemplating some of life's big ideas around relationships and getting older and what we do with our lives and i'm done ready to go i also burnt myself yesterday on my chest which is kind of stupid of me i need to find something to wear that doesn't show off my burn too much it's not actually as warm as it was yesterday but when the sun is shining it was really warm like it was really warm when i was sat out there so yeah got to dress flexibly in these outside times you know got some greek food and some pints and we're sat here because we couldn't get a seat anywhere Devante's breakfast. Shut up. Hiya. Um, Good morning. I can't remember when the last time I spoke to you was. I think before I met my sister um, and we got that food and then I ended up sat outside with my sister and Alex drinking all day and then all night um, and so did therefore did no reading. But now it's Sunday morning and we've woken up and chosen chaos and we're going for breakfast. So yeah, walking in to get some brekkie which would be nice and I'll come back and read and all that kind of stuff that is the whole point of this vlog okay bye someone is drinking a bloody mary it is not me i have a coffee but someone is having a bloody mary breakfast in the station isn't it pretty x royal us how delicious hello what is my hair not a vibe so greasy yes so had a lovely little breakfast this morning it's been a really nice weekend actually my sunburn is slightly <laughs> getting better um yeah yesterday met my sister and we were gonna get this thing for lunch called acropolis which is like a greek takeaway thing um and there was no tables but they were like you can take it away so we got like i got a like gyros and liv got like a box of like a platter kind of thing and so there was initial confusion because they gave us like two boxes and then they were like oh sorry like we'll get you wrap and we were like oh we've only ordered one box and it went back and forth it was very confusing um, and basically they were like we've accidentally made you too much food and it was like a massive box of extra food and like i was like live you won't even finish yours never mind that so like right we'll go sit up by the priory so we'll walk there sit down open the thing no fork for Liv. So Liv's like, right, I'm gonna have to go back and ask for a fork. Went back, they're like, yeah, no, sorry, no forks. You'll have to go to the fish and chip shop next door and ask for one. And I was like, well, she was ringing me and I was like, just sat alone with two pints and a massive gyros. And I was like, well, just go to the front of the queue and say like, look, I'm really sorry. I just want a fork. Would you mind if I like cut in? She's like, no, no, that's too rude. So she queued up in a queue of like 11 people to get to the fish and chip shop to then say, can I have a fork? So by the time she joined me, I'd eaten my food alone. I was like, someone's gonna walk past and be like, are you okay? There was also like swarms of pigeons coming towards me and then as i tried to like shoo one away do i admit this on the internet like the wing touched my foot um do i admit that is it going to be like gk reads his pigeon kicker i didn't kick a pigeon he just got a bit close to my foot um so yeah it was a very nice day and then we had all this leftover food that we couldn't eat so we're like oh alex do you want to come and eat the food so he did and then we sat out for ages on the grass just chilling and then we ended up coming back to the yard when the sun went in it's just a really nice day um with my sister and my boyfriend. So yeah, I have now since finished reading Braised Pork by Anne Yu. And it's a very strange book. Um, it's quite like surreal. There's an element of like, I don't know if you'd call it magical realism, but this sort of like surreal element to it that feels kind of like a fable or a myth. And I liked it. It gave it a very like dreamlike feeling when I was reading it, but I don't know that I necessarily got it. You know, in the same way that sometimes I feel like that with Oyemi, like, I really enjoyed reading it. It felt, like I say, very dreamlike, very kind of evocative. I was very much like in the world. Um, our main character kind of travels to Tibet to delve into this like magical element, but I'm not really sure what it was meant to be saying. I think a lot of it was tied up into those ideas of like what you do with your life and how you feel about your life and the choices you make. Um, 
and feeling kind of apathy towards the world so it was all really interesting stuff I, the prose wasn't particularly beautiful although i say it had that very like beautiful feeling i'd say the prose were very accessible and readable um and i definitely enjoyed it i'm not sure i have like huge amounts to say about it other than like i thought it was a good story i enjoyed like some of the themes that i picked up on i found the ending quite moving i definitely recommend it i feel like i don't have the most to say about it because usually i like to be like like looking at it quite critically whereas with this i just enjoyed the process of reading it um i'm gonna give it a three or 3.5 i think and i definitely recommend it i would love to hear from other people who've read it i think i'm gonna read some reviews just as i've said before i really like to ground or i really like to compare like my reading of something with other people's i would definitely this is Anne's debut novel but i definitely read more from her so yeah this was a success as well i feel like so far i'm reading stuff that not that i wouldn't have picked up obviously it sounded entertaining but it's definitely taking me in like some new directions from the stuff i usually read and so i'm happy about that so yeah read that and i'm gonna pick up now the third book ways to disappear which is downstairs which i'm very excited about i think this is going to be a little bit more light-hearted potentially a little bit more like fun set in brazil um and it's actually a beautiful day outside the sun is shining so me and Ella are in the yard and I'm gonna go read in the yard. If you wanna, do you wanna come with? Yeah, you can come with. Hello, hello. Uh, this is my cap to stop me getting a burnt scalp slash forehead. I feel like the lighting is not really the one, um, but I have to sit and soak up the last few rays of sun before it leaves the yard and so i have been reading ways to disappear by idra novi and i am loving this book it's so weird um and just kind of like nothing i've ever read before and i'm so glad i'm only halfway through but i'm so glad that i picked up this beautiful cover because i feel like it's a bit of a hidden gem so it's about this brazilian author who's kind of like very famous in a literary way but in a way that you know how famous is any literary author it's not like being a celebrity and so she goes missing she climbs into an almond tree um and then goes missing and no one knows where she is and so everyone in brazil's kind of like where is she it becomes a big news story it's making like sales for her old books go up and we follow her american translator who's a woman who lives in pennsylvania who then travels to brazil to kind of find her um and so it's about our main character what's she called emma and about Beatrice who's the author's children so she's got a daughter called Raquel and a son called Marcus who are like adults and yeah it's almost like a like I said I thought it might be quite fun and rompy and it definitely has this sort of like noir feel to it so you start to find out about the things that Beatrice is mixed up in and there's this like continuing thread of kind of tied to like the corruption in Brazil but basically some bad people are kind of after Beatrice and therefore are like following Emma and Raquel um, and so they're kind of trying to escape these people and trying to find Beatrice so it has that noir vibe but within that you get kind of a lot about the work that Beatrice r r writes wrote um, and she wrote these kind of very strange magical realism stories um, and you don't get like actual like extracts of the text or anything but you get these like repeating images of the kind of things that she were writing that she was writing about which gives it this yeah very like strange surrealist feel um it kind of like teeters on the edge between like absurdity um almost like ridiculous scenes of like this noir and this sort of adventure but then also like some really really beautiful writing about writing and about translation and i do love books about books and about writers um but i've turned down quite a few pages where the translator is kind of thinking about the work that beatrice wrote her relationship her relationship to it and the way she translated so as an example and wasn't the splendor of translation this very thing to discover sentences this beautiful and then have the chance to make someone else hear their beauty who hadn't yet to hear it to arrive at least once at a moment this intimate and singular which would not be possible without these words arranged in this order on this page and yeah i just find that quite profound to be honest like a little bit it is that maybe made it sound a bit sentimental it's not really sentimental but yeah just like fascinating writing on on translation and on writing and kind of thinking about that like reading Beatrice's work and trying to find clues within that this sort of like an enigmatic female writer I yeah I'm just absolutely loving it it's funny like there's a lot 
every kind of character isn't particularly sympathetic it's not emotional in the way that you feel invested in these people as much as just like the world it's created and the kind of things it's saying about life and about writing are quite emotional it's just it's just a joy really i'm absolutely loving reading it um but yeah i'll keep on reading and let you know but so far very good so far so good very right go get hi guys i uh, got my camera around for me guess where we're going i'm laughing because we've already filmed this and alex <laughs> didn't press record um we're going to our parents house because it's so sunny and the yard sun has left we can't waste a beautiful day like this so go to our parents probably drink their alcohol sit in the garden it's all good good times on a sunday people should do the jump again <laughs> alex actually took down cardboard mountain the other day um so god i look a bit red don't i we're back from my mum and dad's and on the way back we picked up some food some ramen from that place that i've got ramen from before which i'm very excited about had to get changed because don't want to spill well i will spill don't want to stain but we got home and they rang alex said we forgot your steamed buns we we're waiting out there for like 15 20 minutes and now alex had to go back to pick them up so not a vibe but food is a vibe very excited to eat it should we have a look these are i don't know what is in that is that an empty have they literally given us an empty thing who knows there's the gyoza. I don't want to take the lids off until Al's back, but yeah, there's the ramen. Mm. Okay, here we go. Ramen, soy soaked egg, uh, gyoza, what, what are they called? Uh, steam buns. Steam buns. Mm. Hi guys, so I ate my delicious food. This bit of hair, doing the most. My sister actually said today that um, Alex was like, oh, you've got a bit of hair that didn't make it into your bun. It looks like you've got a mullet. And I was like, haha. Then my sister was like, yeah, I always think that. I always think you look like you've got a mullet. I was like, oh, well, cheers for letting me know before now. Anyway, ate my delicious food and finished this delicious book. <laughs> um, I really love this book. It's such a little hidden gem. Definitely recommend that you pick it up. I really think it's like super beautifully written, like not in necessarily a flowery way, but just like really excellent sentences. I feel like it's a really it's a quiet book but i'd say it's really emotionally intelligent it's kind of like in a way a series of character studies i said like these characters aren't necessarily sympathetic you're not necessarily like rooting for them or like loving them but you really see them all go on a journey and i think she does so well like getting into multiple characters minds in a fairly short book i absolutely love that part of it and i love the idea that you know we're, it's kind of all about this famous author but we get almost nothing from her we just get other people thinking about her apart from one like extremely affecting piece of the novel where you get a small bit of her perspective and I think that worked so so well the sort of like a, I don't want to give any spoilers but like kind of an incident that the novel hinges around which looks really interestingly at like the way you process things in your life it really interestingly explores motherhood and you know it kind of like is masquerading as this like noir novel like it has this sense of mystery the sense of adventure it has these like tropes we're familiar with but it's doing such interesting things with it and it is a kind of sad book but it also has like humor in it i'd honestly think i would read this book again because it was so evocative of this place and the writing was just so to me perfect on a sentence level that like i definitely think i'd pick this up again i'm so pleased i found this book i've given it a 4.5 um just because i really loved it and i did a little bit of investigating into the author and she's written another book called I can't remember what it's called those we knew or something like that that's apparently like a me too novel that i'm 100 percent gonna be picking up so as in terms of picking up books based on the covers this couldn't have gone better i genuinely love this book i think it's amazing gonna be recommending it to loads of people and on the whole i enjoyed all of the books like they were all really really interesting like not particularly plotty books but all kind of like slightly melancholy books but very readable they've all made me think about a lot of things they're definitely books that weren't on my radar before so it's been a super successful vlog we love we love to see it um i'm now gonna watch line of duty I'm very excited for that um keep telling alex that he can't be in the room because he is only on series two and i'm not even gonna get spoilers but we'll have that argument off camera and yeah thank you so much for watching please do let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books if you think they sound good if you ever just like pick up books based on the cover i'd love to hear from you as always and yeah obviously i would love you to subscribe to my instagram and my story graph i was gonna say goodreads story graph i'll link down below and i'll see you in my next one bye